Hey, welcome to the show, Podcast World. It is time for episode 439 of the Grow From Your Heart podcast. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at Seeds Here Now. If you need new seeds in your garden, I highly recommend Seeds Here Now, and you can find them at www.seedsherenow.com. You know, it has become a tradition that we start this podcast off by talking about what I'm smoking. Today, I've been taking dabs of Stardog Ambrosia from our friends at Apothecary Farms. The label says this product contains 64.7% THC and 76.4% total cannabinoids. Stardog is one of my favorite strains to smoke. It is also one of my favorite strains to grow, and I absolutely love the concentrate. So big shout out to my friends at Apothecary Farms for the Stardog Ambrosia. All right, podcast world, in this episode, I'm going to read a listener email about white flies. Before we get there, let's give some shout outs to our friends on Patreon. I want to give a giant Grow From Your Heart podcast shout out to my friend Jacob W. I owe a giant shout out to Just Baz. How about a big Grow From Your Heart podcast shout out to my friend Kenna, you dig it. And of course, a giant shout out to my friend Sam. Big thanks and big shout out to everybody who supports the show on Patreon. And if you'd like to learn how to become a patron, you can do so by going to www.patreon.com slash grow from your heart. All of the information you need will be right there on the screen. All right. In this episode, I am going to read an email about white flies. Before we get there, I would like to talk about something I saw in the news recently. Recently, I saw a report of a young lady dying from cannabis use. I want to come on this podcast and call complete bullshit. That young lady did not die because of cannabis use. I do not know that lady's medical history. I don't know anything about that person. The only thing I know is that this person died and the coroner found THC in her system. So he then decided that cannabis is what killed this lady. I call complete bullshit. I think that this medical examiner is blaming cannabis because he can't find the true cause of death. And I also think he may be blaming cannabis so that he can catch a little spotlight time for a minute. If he finds the very first cannabis-related death That will put him in some sort of medical book. That will put some news on him. I'm talking about the doctor right now, even though I won't say his name. He is getting a little bit of spotlight time because of this situation. He may be taking that opportunity to get a little attention. And he may be on the other team. He may be against cannabis. So this would be a good way to kind of throw cannabis under the bus is to find the very first death caused by cannabis. So he would be able to fight for the other team. He'd be able to get a little bit of notoriety. And he would also have a cause, an explanation for this young lady's death. From everything else I read, there is not a reasonable cause of death. So he simply states that he believes cannabis is what did it. I am not a doctor. I'm not going to try to explain why you cannot OD from cannabis. It does not work on the parts of your body that make you shut down and make you die. Those are different drugs. If you could die from cannabis, it would have happened a long time ago. Myself and many of my friends would have been victims several years ago. I do not know anything about this young lady's medical history. I don't know anything about her health history. I don't know anything about her life or her habits. She was not an old person. She was not a sick person. That is really all that any of the articles listed would mention about her. The only real details we got was that she was dead and that she had THC in her system and that the coroner was blaming it on the THC. I know it's tragic and terrible when anybody dies, but sometimes People just die without explanation. There doesn't have to be a reason. Sometimes part of your body just goes, hey, I'm done. Sometimes your car breaks down. Sometimes your computer gives up. Sometimes a light bulb burns out. Our bodies are made of a bunch of different connecting parts. And one one decides to shut down, it can shut down the whole system. So I don't know what killed this young lady. Honestly, I don't believe the coroner knows what killed this young lady. One thing I am certain of, This lady did not die because she had THC in her system. So no matter what the news tells you, no matter what this report tells you, there are still zero deaths linked to cannabis consumption. I want to send my love and my condolences to this young lady's family. It's terrible that she's been brought into the news and into the spotlight in such a terrible way. But I send my love, I send my heart out to her, her family, and I send a big middle finger to this coroner. Uh, He is wrong. He is a liar. I really think he's just trying to get some spotlight. I am not sure if this is the end of this story. I'm not sure if he can just say cannabis caused this and then somewhere in some record book, it now says that there is an official cannabis death. I hope that there is more investigation, more to be proven before that can be marked down. I will do my best to stay updated on that situation. 
All right, let's jump into this email about white flies. This email goes a lot like this. Hello, Rasta Jeff. I need some help, and you are the best resource I know for all things cannabis. Feel free to read this on the show if you want. Well, here we go, buddy. We're going to read this on the show right now. It says, I've been bested by white flies. Let me give you a little background on my grow. I grow in a reasonably sized cabinet, six foot by two foot, divided into two by two and four by two spaces, and a two by two grow tent. I keep my mother's in the two by two cabinet. I grow out clones in the two by two, flower in the four by two, all in soil with LED lighting. All of this is in my basement. All right, so we got a nice little compact perpetual grow. It says about two or two and a half months ago, I found white flies in my flower. I picked off every affected leaf and put out a bunch of sticky traps here on the right start. I shook the plants three to four times a day and vacuumed up what flew off, which got me through flower. So far, that is an effective strategy. Let's talk about white flies really quickly. White flies are really easy to identify. They are little white flies. They look like flying pieces of ash in your grow room. If you pull off a leaf and turn it upside down, it looks like a piece of rice or probably bunches of pieces of rice on the bottom of your leaves. Those are white flies. When you shake the plants, when you tap the pots, if white things come flying out, those are white flies. This guy said he shook the plants three to four times a day and vacuumed up what flew off. That is a very effective strategy. Those white flies want to fly up toward the light. When you shake the plant, you disrupt them. They're nice and comfortable. They're hanging out in the leaves. You shake it. They go, oh, what the fuck was that? They go flying up toward the light. They just want to go fly until all the disruption stops and they'll go land back on their home. While they're flying, get the shot vac and just shot vac the shit out of them. I use the long attachment on the shot vac and I would just point that right at the light and just kind of move back and forth as those bugs fly up at the light and just get them. If you want to get in there and kind of tap the buds with the shop vac and just smack it, you're using that long wand attachment, just smack some of the buds with that, and then the bugs will go flying out, and you can just suck them up right as they come flying out there. You can do that multiple times a day. If you remove a lot of the excess foliage, the white flies have less places to hang out, less places for breeding, make it less desirable in there. There is more to this email. Let's keep going. It says, now, with everything in veg, I went to the grow store and got the recommendations of my local guy and treated with a rosemary extract pesticide. I also did a soil soak and foliar spray on all three spaces, and I sprayed down all surfaces as well. All right, so you got a pesticide that was recommended by a grow store person. Then you did a soil soak and a foliar spray on all of your spaces, so you treated all of the plants that were in veg. Then you also sprayed down all surfaces. That is a good plan of attack. That is a good strategy, but I honestly don't think that the rosemary extract pesticide is going to be strong enough to eradicate white flies at the level which you have got them. You have got a serious infestation, and something like a rosemary extract works better as a preventative. It just makes it kind of undesirable for the for the pests, and they're already there. They don't give a shit. They've made themselves comfortable. I don't think you're going to get enough coverage with this rosemary extract to run them off. There's more to the message. Let's keep going. It says, it seemed to work. He recommended holding off on moving anything into flower and treat a few times a week for a few weeks to make sure the white flies are gone. Everything seemed to be going well. I treated for three weeks. I cut new clones. I moved my current clones to flower. And after a week under 12-12, I found more white flies. Something to address right there. First off, you started with a pesticide application that was not strong enough for the infestation you were battling, so you did not really have a chance. It looked like you knocked them down, but there were still eggs. You need to break the life cycle of the pest. You need to disrupt multiple generations. Then you can guarantee that the pests are gone, but you were using something that didn't knock out all stages. Then you made a crucial mistake. You applied the same pesticide multiple times a week for multiple weeks. By the third week, those white flies were laughing at that pesticide. They were going, ha ha, we drink that shit now. And the bugs that are now in your room have built up a resistance to that rosemary extract pesticide. So your main crucial mistake was using one pesticide over and over again. You need to rotate products. You need multiple different products so that you can prevent that resistance. And you also need the appropriate pesticide. You were basically just giving them a bubble bath after a while, and they were just laughing at you. Let's keep going. There is more to this message. 
At this point, the plants are in flower. They're under 12-12, and we have discovered more white flies one week into flower. So it says they are in all three spaces. Yes, those white flies get around quite quickly. They breed rapidly. White flies are a pain in the ass. They get out of control really quickly, but we are going to help you get rid of them. He says, I trashed all of my clones and flowering plants. I trimmed up my mother plants. I vacuumed the spaces out and I tried insecticidal soap on the mothers and empty grow spaces. Again, it seemed to help. I thought they were gone. I cut new clones and this week they're back again. Yeah, that insecticidal soap and that rosemary oil are not going to cut it. We're going to have to step up our game. We're going to have to go nuclear pretty soon. We're going to have to talk about that. Let's keep going. There is more to this message. I grabbed a bag of diatinaceous earth and I've dusted everything. I checked today and the bottoms of my leaves are loaded with white fly larva once again. I need a nuclear solution to this. I'm not sure what else to try other than bug bombs in each grow space and I hope the mothers survive to cut clones from. Can you recommend anything that would be a sure fire way to wipe out my white flies? Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Thanks again from Dan. Hey, Dan, thank you for the great email. Uh, it's too bad you got white flies, but let's talk about getting rid of those bad motherfuckers for you. White flies can be a pain in the ass. Like I said earlier, they come on quickly, they breed quickly, they spread from room to room rapidly. Unless you know how to get rid of them, they can be a complete pain in the ass. Let's talk about eradicating white flies in your grow. One thing that I like is you only have mother plants. That is going to be very beneficial. We don't have to think about treating plants that are in flower. We will talk about treating flowering plants, but it's going to help you out a lot that you can apply just about anything at this point because you have got veg plants. You don't have any buds to worry about. That is truly advantageous. I think a lot of growers, a lot of facilities are doing it a little bit backwards when it comes to pest management. They focus on treating the flowering plants for pests. They're the priority for pest management. Then they go to the large veg. Then they go to the small veg. Then they go to the tiny stuff. Then they go to the moms and they worry about the mom's dead last when it comes to pest management. I like to go the complete opposite direction. I like to worry about pest, pathogen, problem-free mother plants, and work my way forward through the grow with a good, healthy start. So in my opinion, IPM starts in the mother room, then it works all the way through the grow. It's a process. It starts in the mother room just like all of the other plants. So I love that you've got nothing but mother plants to work with. That puts you ahead of the game. One of the first things I would do is work on sealing up my grow space. Where are those bugs coming in? They're tiny, but they're finding a way in and they're breeding. So figure out where they're coming from. Seal up the grow space a little bit more securely. That will help you out. The next step is to defoliate heavily. Take off any leaf you don't think you need. We need to get rid of all of the breeding space, all the hangout spots. We need to remove all the space for these fucking white flies to hang out. Let's take away all the free parking. Just chop it out of there, clean it up, get that out of the grow space, get that out of the house. You said this is in your basement. Get it out of the house. Get it as far away from your house as you can. Get rid of all these white flies. Just evict them. Get out. We don't want them here. So defoliate heavily. Defoliate to the point that you're worried about those plants. They'll grow more leaves. They'll come back. As long as those plants are mostly healthy, they will recover from the defoliation. They will like being defoliated more than they like being a host for white flies. So strip off any extra leaves. Strip off all the giant fan leaves. We don't need all that shit right now. These aren't high performance plants. These are mother plants that we're just trying to make survive at this point in time. So defoliate heavily. Your next thing to think about is stepping up your spray regimen. The things you're spraying right now have basically become Kool-Aid for the white flies. I would suggest a stronger pesticide application. Here is where you have a few moral decisions to make. How strong of a pesticide do you want to use? I try to stay on the Colorado Department of Agriculture approved pesticide list for commercial cannabis production. I try to maintain that standard in any grow I work in, whether it be a home grow, whether it be a commercial grow, I still try to adhere to those standards just to make it a habit. Some people don't want to use any pesticides that are not OMRI certified organic. What you spray on your plants is ultimately your decision, but also you have to live with what you've done to those plants and what you are giving to other people to consume. So as long as you can live with yourself and you feel okay with what you've done, you can apply whatever you're comfortable with to these plants. In this message, you said you're ready to go nuclear. Carefully scheduled, sprayed pesticide applications 
will be the quickest and simplest way to eradicate these bugs, but we can't just keep spraying forever. So we need to eradicate them and figure out how they got in there and make sure they don't come back. So let's talk about a few products we can apply to our plants to make sure we get rid of these white flies. One thing we can start with is Azimax. Azimax has multiple modes of attack to make sure these bugs don't want to be around. Hopefully, when you're working with Azimax, you're wearing a glove, but if you've ever touched it, you'll notice that it is quite oily. We apply that oily consistency to the bottom of the leaves. The bugs don't want to be on that oily consistency, so it makes it undesirable for them to live there. Then, as an added bonus, there is Azadiractin in the Azimax. That works as a stomach poison, so any pest that does eat your leafy foliage, they will get a tummy ache, they will stop eating, and they will die. Another product I can recommend for you is Evergreen Pyrethrum. There's also a very similar product called Pyganic. They are very similar products, but they do have different application rates. So if you're used to using one or the other, make sure you read the bottle and adjust your application rates. Both of those products are very oily and very sticky. So again, we're going to apply those to the bottom, the underside of the leaves where we see all those eggs. If we apply a nice coat of oily surface, those bugs don't want to go there. They don't want to hang out. They don't want to breed and we'll also suffocate the bugs and we can also suffocate their eggs. So if we use evergreen or pyganic, our first mode of attack is to create an undesirable environment by making it sticky. We're also suffocating them. Then there's also the added bonus of the pyrethrum in there. So anything that does take a bite out of the leaf, it is going to get a tummy ache and it is going to die. Those are both very affordable products. Another very affordable and readily available product is something called Monterey Garden Spray with Spinosad. I'm not sure if you call it Spinosad or Spinosad. Either way, that shit works to get rid of white flies. Spinosad is a fungus that is created in the bottom of whiskey or rum barrels. I believe it is the bottom of a whiskey barrel. It is naturally occurring, and for some reason, it kills the shit out of white flies. So there's a product called Monterey Garden Spray, and it will say Spinosad right on the bottle. It is very affordable. It is very easy to find. Another product I can recommend for you, we're starting to get a little more expensive. Also, we're starting to get a little more dangerous, a little less gentle. Another product I'll recommend is something called Venerate. Venerate will wipe the shit out of almost every pest in your garden. Another product I can recommend for white flies is Botanigard ES. And I also like a product called Biosear WP. Both of those products contain a beneficial fungus. I'm trying to remember the name. It is actually called Buveria bassiana, which is very good at destroying white flies. Now, if you really want to step up your game, a really expensive product that will work to help you get rid of your white flies is a product called Mycotrol ESO. Be forewarned, that one is not cheap. I don't know your budget. I don't know what you're working with. I don't know how nuclear you want to go, but that is a nice list of products that will work to eradicate your white flies. Now, whatever you choose to use to get rid of these bugs, make sure you have a rotation. Don't spray the same product every three days. Spray one product on day one, apply a different product on day four, apply a different product on day seven if you can, then start the rotation over. But don't do the same product more than two times in a row, no matter what you do. That is how you start giving these pests a resistance to the products you're buying. Your bugs are going to get stronger and stronger. You're going to create super bugs in there. Another thing you can do is you can tank mix multiple pesticides in an applicator at one time as long as those products are compatible. So before you go mixing a large batch of pesticide, if you're going to do a tank mix of multiple pesticides you've never ran together before, I suggest mixing a very small batch of them together. Mix it up. See what happens. See if you get any weird chemical reactions out of it. If you don't get any weird reactions, mix up the desired amount which you want to apply to your plants, then pick one sacrificial plant and spray the shit out of it. See if that one plant does any weird shit. If it doesn't harm that plant, you've got a great mix. That is your new pesticide application. Write down exactly what went in there. Write down how much water you started with. Write down how much whatever product you put in there. Write down how much of the other product you put in there. Write it down. Write down when you sprayed. Write down what you saw from that. Take a lot of notes. We consume cannabis, so we forget a lot of shit. Make sure you write things down. If you want a great lesson on mixing multiple pesticides in one spray applicator for one good application, I highly recommend an episode I did called Tank Mix. It is episode number 289 of the Grow From Your Heart podcast. Make sure you check that one out. I talk a lot about 
mixing pesticides and proper pesticide application. So we've got a lot of spray pesticide application options. Another thing I would recommend is a root drench. Many of the products I recommended are also usable as a drench. I feel that maybe some of the larvae from your white flies has ended up in your medium. That's why you're having a hard time getting rid of them. You've got eggs just chilling down there in the soil. So I would recommend a root drench. I would probably use the Evergreen or the Azimax or the Botanigard, and I would just mix that into some water and I would soak the roots thoroughly. Just water it in, let it soak out through the bottom. That way you've got pesticide in your medium. We need to go nuclear like you said. We don't need to leave any open space. Let's get the leaves coated in nasty stickiness. Let's get the root zone. Let's get that medium coated in nasty stickiness. Let's not make it a desirable environment for these white flies. Now, when you do a root drench, you do need to make sure not to suffocate the roots. So whatever your recommended dosage is for your foliar spray, I would probably reduce the root drench application to about half of whatever you are spraying. So if you're spraying 10 milliliters of a product, I would root drench with five. You can always root drench again with the increased dosage, but you can't undrench. So once those roots are coated in oil and you've got a problem, you're already pretty fucked. So go light. Then if that doesn't do it, go harder next time. Pay close attention to the plants. Like I said, write everything down. Another thing we need to do is continue with the yellow sticky traps. Those yellow sticky traps are going to let us know how the population is sustaining. We'll know if there are less, if there are more white flies than there were before. One important thing is to change those sticky traps. If you leave the same trap up for too long, how do you know how many flies were gathered at one point in time? So make sure you rotate them on a frequent basis. Once a week is probably enough. So we have heavily defoliated. We've taken all that foliage out of the grow. It's out of the house. It's as far away as we can get it. We have burned it. It is gone. Then we have applied ridiculous amounts of pesticides on a routine schedule. We're spraying every three days and we are rotating. We are possibly doing a tank mix with multiple pesticides. This is going to knock down the populations. Then we are going to do a root drench. This is going to make sure that none of the larvae, none of the eggs are chilling in the medium. Now we have, in theory, destroyed all of the bugs we are trying to get rid of. What are we going to do to make sure they don't come back? It sounds like the first step is to seal the room. The next step is to think of an integrated pest management strategy that will make sure we don't get these bugs back when we are late in flower. It is really easy to get rid of these bugs with our mother plants, with our veg plants, because we can just go spraying every three days. Once we've got buds, we can't spray anymore. So what are we going to do to make sure we don't get bugs later in flower? This is where I like to introduce predator insects. Spider mites, thrips, fungus gnats, white flies. I don't care what kind of bug you are, you cannot build a resistance to being eaten by a predator. So once you have eradicated your infestation and you're sure that 99.9% .9 of these white flies are gone, I would switch my strategy and invest heavily in predator bugs. If you are at a point where you have only got mother plants and or veg plants, you are at a huge advantage to start with predator bugs. It is a great time to start building colonies. You can purchase enough predator bugs to build a large enough colony to overtake any sort of invaders that may try to come in if you start with your moms and your veg plants. The idea would be to get enough predator insects on those veg plants to where when you take clones, you move some predators right along with the clones. Then those veg plants start to grow and those predator insects will colonize on your veg plants. They're partying, they're breeding, they're living life. So they're just colonizing and they're expanding with the grow. They become a part of the grow. You create a symbiosis. That's what happens outside. That's what happens in nature. If you get bug A, bug B will come along and say, hey, look, a bunch of these and it'll eat it. Then they'll either move along or they'll try to colonize. If they get too much, if they get too comfortable, if they get too fancy, bug C will come along and say, nah, -uh, bro, this is our territory. And they'll eat bug B and they'll run them off. And then those bugs will either move along to the next garden and keep playing security that way, or they'll repeat the process. They'll try to hang out. They'll run out of bugs to eat and they'll die or they'll leave or something will come and eat them. That's how it happens in nature. We can replicate that in our grow rooms if we use a well thought out integrated pest management strategy. Now, something you're going to have to be careful with is, are the pesticides you are using going to endanger your predators that you're paying money for. In a lot of commercial environments, I will start the mother rooms and the veg rooms by using pesticide applications. As we move into the later veg rooms and the flower areas, I will begin releasing large amounts of predator bugs. 
My budget may be a little bit different than most people's because I'm working on a commercial scale. Also, the value of my crop is more critical than some folks because I am working on a large commercial scale. I'm not downplaying the size of your garden. I'm just saying that we have to be a little more careful. We're going to lose hundreds of pounds compared to somebody losing one or two pounds in a home grow. Yes, you're out of medicine, but if I lose hundreds of pounds, people are out of jobs, businesses fail. It is a very huge loss. So my strategy is to go very hard on the moms, go very hard in the veg phase, make sure I do not get any pests, any pathogens, any problems throughout that cycle. Late in veg or right at the start of flower, I start adjusting my pesticide application schedule to make sure I'm not applying anything that will be harmful or detrimental to my predator bugs. Then I like to switch to releasing large, ridiculous amounts of predatory mites. So I've got that residual pesticide hanging out for a couple of weeks. Then that starts to degrade. Then by the time all that pesticide breaks down is no longer active on my plants, my predatory mites have had time to colonize. I've got a big army in there and I've still got protection. I know that I don't have any chance for spider mites or anything like that to come take a hold in my garden. So you've got a couple of options for this strategy. You can either start by letting the predatory mites go in the mom room, get them in the veg room, get them started early, get them colonizing, or you can start with pesticides early. Then when you move to the flowering phase, when it's no longer a good idea to spray, you can start releasing your predatory mites and start working things that way. You've got a few things to think about, but I think with all the information I have given you, we should be able to get rid of those white flies. Let's talk more specifically about some of the predatory bugs that you could use, and then we're going to get out of here for this episode. I really appreciate lace wings in a garden. I feel like lace wings are hungry and aggressive. I am most familiar with the lace wings that come in the eggs that are on the black sheet that you hang in different locations throughout the grow. Those are what I'm most familiar with. I like to watch them come alive. They turn into a little crocodile looking thing, and then eventually they turn into a green lace wing. Those things are hungry. They are so hungry that I believe they become carnivorous. They will eat every pest in your garden. Then they will turn on their friends and family. So green lace wings are awesome in any garden. Then the next predatory mite that I would recommend that works on a plethora of garden pests is the Swarovski predatory mite. I release Swarovski mites on a regular basis in any commercial grow environment that I am responsible for. I can also recommend Cucamaris and minute pirate bugs. Now, predatory mites can get a little bit expensive, but if all you've got are mother plants, you have a great opportunity to start colonies in a small garden. So now all you've got to do is hang up some yellow sticky traps, defoliate like a motherfucker, do some research on several pesticides, select the few that work for you, create a nice rotation of pesticides, start applying them diligently until you knock down that population, then decide how you want to proceed. Are you going to keep going with the pesticides or are you going to start using some sort of predators? You also need to seal up that room and figure out where those bugs are coming from. You've got a very small crack somewhere. They have found that crack and they are making their way in. So we've got to figure out how to seal that up. But I think we can get rid of these white flies. White flies aren't as big of a problem as they seem like. They're more of a pain in the ass. They're more ugly. They're more annoying than anything else. But if we stay on top of it, we will get them out of your garden. Hey, I want to thank you for a great email. If anybody else out there has a grow question, I would love to help you out. My email address is growfromyourheart at hotmail.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. If you have sent me an email and I haven't read it on the show, don't feel discouraged. I have got a stack of emails about eight feet tall. I am working my way through them. Be patient and I will read your message on a future episode. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got for you for episode 439. I want to thank you again for listening. I'll be back in a couple of days with fresh new content. If you feel like this episode was educational, informative, or entertaining, and you would like to make a financial contribution to the show, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash grow from your heart. All of the information you need will be right there on the screen. Once again, big thanks and big shout out to everybody who has helped out on the Patreon campaign in the past, in the present, and in the future. I would also appreciate it if you support the show on social media. You can find us on Facebook. Simply search for the Grow From Your Heart podcast. On Twitter, it's at GFYH podcast. On Instagram, I use my other company. I use Irie underscore genetics. And please give me a follow on Cannabuzz. Cannabuzz is a new cannabis-friendly social media application. If you post about cannabis, your post will not get censored or deleted. If you've got cannabis questions or cannabis photography you would like to share, come find us over on Cannabuzz. Join the community. We would love to see you over there. If you've got something you'd like to say and you're not into all that social media nonsense, you can send me an email. My email address is growfromyourheart 
at hotmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got for you for this episode. I want to give a huge shout out to my friend Fumador. And until next time, take a fat dab and give your mom a hug for me.